geologists are telling us that supervolcanoes have their own rules for erupting. Mega eruptions and smaller volcanoes are triggered by different mechanisms. This is on Nature magazine. Huge volcanic blasts occur less frequency than scientists would expect. Volcanologists now think they can explain why. Super eruptions and smaller eruptions are triggered by fundamentally different processes, so they don't act the same. Small volcanoes such as Italy's Stromboli erupt when molten rock rises from deep within the earth and then stalls in an underground chamber until enough pressure builds to blast it out to the surface. But the mag magma chambers of the giant volcanoes, such as the one that erupted two million years ago beneath what is now Yellowstone National Park, the as we know, the Yellowstone supervolcano, one of the 21, 22 supervolcanoes of our Earth, are too large for pressure from magma squirts to cause an eruption. Instead, the molten rock accumulates until its sheer buoyancy creates a different kind of a stress. It's a stress that cracks open the top of the chamber and starts an eruption, researchers report. Essentially, they say, we identify two different trigger mechanisms for eruptions. One for small volcanoes up to about 500 cubic kilometers of magma, and one where we can generate super eruptions. This is what Luca Carici, volcanologist at the University of Geneva, Switzerland, says. Carici and colleagues described the scenario today in Nature Geoscience. The big eruptions are less common in the geological record than scientists would expect if they were to simply extrapolate from the number of small eruptions that go off over time. That difference could be due to the sampling bias or to a fundamental difference between big and small eruptions. And the difference also with the mega super eruptions is the fact that they can go on for hundreds or, or even thousands of years. Please support my Patreon account since YouTube has again demonetized my YouTube channel. The daily posts are five videos daily and they are totally different from what I have on my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for your support and that you find all my content so interesting. You'll find the Patreon account details in the description box below. Carici and his team use modeling and simulations to study the many factors that go into an eruption, from the heat of rising magma to the forces required to crack at the top of the chamber. For small volcanoes, the scientists confirmed that the pressure of magma rising from below was enough to trigger an eruption. This is what's going now on, well, as we can see in uh, Kilauea is erupting, the Alaska volcano is erupting, and also in the Aleutian Islands, and also, of course, the La Palmas volcano is erupting in the Canary Islands. So uh, now for smaller volcanoes, the scientists confirmed that the pressure of magma rising from below was enough to trigger an eruption. It's like blowing inside a little balloon, and if you blow fast enough, you can make it explode, Carici exp explains. But adding magma to a much larger chamber would be like blowing fruitlessly into a hot air passenger balloon Instead, a supervolcano accumulates a huge amount of magma, which is less dense than the surrounding rock and hence more buoyant. At some threshold, Carici says, there is enough magma in the chamber for its buoyancy to crack the rock above it and trigger an eruption. The idea is bolstered by the laboratory study published by Nature Geoscience, a team led by geoscientists Win Malfit and Carmen sanchez Val of Zurich, Switzerland, measured the density of molten rock chemically similar to that found in many volcanoes, and the scientists used the European Synchrotron Radiation Facility at Grenoble, France, to recreate the high pressures and temperatures found inside our Earth. From the density measurements, they could determine the magma's buoyancy. They said the bigger a magma chamber gets, the more buoyancy will start to play in. Now, Carici and his team have also worked out how big a magma chamber could theoretically get. The maximum size for an unerupted chamber of magma depends on the balance between its thickness and its horizontal extent. A chamber that is too thick will erupt, and a chamber that's too wide will start to cool and crystallize at the edges. The biggest chamber possible 
would be about 90 kilometers across and contain about 35,000 cubic kilometers of magma, Karichi says. That's seven times the amount of magma spewed out during the largest eruption known from the La Garita caldera 28 million years ago in what is now Colorado. So I'll leave links below for you for this from Nature. The article was from 2014. Please leave your comments. Thank you for your support.